All right, so today I have an amazing message that God gave me, and I'm very excited to share it. So I really just want to dive right in. So I'm going to say a prayer, and then we're going to get into what is, what's the saying, meat and potatoes. All right, so if you just go ahead, bow your um, bow your heads and close your eyes, and I'm going to say a prayer. Father God, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity where we get to be here in your house on a Wednesday night. Father God, Lord, I thank you for all the youth and all the adults that are here. I pray, Lord, that you push me aside and that you allow your spirit to fill the room, that you allow me to speak um, just clearly. I allow your, um, allow your Holy Spirit just to flow out of my mouth. And it's in your name we pray, amen. All right, so... You guys know that, you know, you might have seen me around City Youth, um, you know, I, I know all of your faces, um, but you guys might not know how I got here. So I started coming to City Youth, I was actually a senior in high school, and so I heard about City Youth because my brother started coming, and I knew every Wednesday night he would get picked up in a van full of kids, and he would just hop in, and I just knew he would go, and then he would just show up at the end of the night. Um, so that's how I found out about City Youth. My brother would just get in a van, um, Pastor Tyrone would come pick him up, so this bald black guy would come pick up my brother at the house, and then he would just bring him back. Um, but one day I decided to come, and when I decided to come, I was, I was very sad. I was going through a very sad season of my life. I was uncomfortable. I was really shy. And the biggest thing that was like just circling around my mind is what are people going to think about me? Are people even going to like me? Like, like, I don't know what to expect. I don't even want to be here. But I kept showing up. Spoiler alert. I'm still here. Um, but yeah, so that's a little bit of my story. Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share with you the end of that story. But First, I'm going to go ahead and dive into the message. If you're taking notes, the message is titled, I Just Want You. And we are going to be reading verses Luke 7. And we're going to be focusing on the verses 36 through 50. Um, so if you have your Bibles, you can go ahead and open it up. And I'll go ahead and read it. It should be on the screen, too, if you don't have your holy iPhones or your Bible on deck. So it reads, Luke 7, 36 through 38 says... One of the Pharisees asked Jesus to have dinner with him, so Jesus went to his home and sat down to eat. When a certain immoral woman from that city heard he was eating there, she brought a beautiful alabaster jar filled with expensive perfume. Then she knelt behind him at his feet, weeping. Her tears fell on his feet, and she wiped them off with her hair. Then she kept kissing his feet and putting perfume on them. Now... <laughs> I wouldn't kiss anybody's feet, first of all. I don't even want to touch anybody's feet, let alone wash their feet with my hair. Um, so yeah, this woman's already a lot braver and a lot bolder than I ever would be. But this woman, she walked into a place where she knew she was not invited. She knew the reputation she had. She was a sinful woman. She was immortal. So she knew that all these people at this dinner who she was, where she was not invited to knew her reputation, knew who she was. They knew that she was impure. But still, she knew that she needed to be there because she heard that Jesus was going to be there. And she knew that she just needed to see Jesus. And we're going to go ahead and talk about what she brought. So it says that she brought an alabaster jar and she brought faith. So an alabaster jar, it looks a little something like this. It should be on the screen. So that's what an alabaster jar looks like. And what it's made of, it's a mineral. It's almost like marble. And this mineral is actually used in the construction of Solomon's temple. You could read all about that in First Chronicles. So this is a very, like, beautiful, expensive piece of mineral. And what this alabaster jar is used for is it's, it's used to store oil, to store perfume, to keep it pure and um, from, un, like, not spoiling, so it un, like, prevents it from spoiling and getting nasty and losing the, the fragrance. So, um, and they would seal the jar. So you see like the little neck of the jar, how it kind of like divots in. So they would seal the jar, and if you wanted to use this oil or the perfume that you have in the jar, you literally had to break, break it. So if you broke it, you better be using it, you know? So um, this woman, if she wanted, she wanted to anoint Jesus' feet, so she had to break this jar. And she had to use it. And it says that it's an expensive perfume. This woman used an expensive perfume. And um, theologians believe that this perfume that she used was a year's wage. So imagine you have this jar, one that's already beautiful, that's already worth money. But then the perfume inside of it is worth 
like a whole paycheck for your whole year. So, but she decided to use it on feet. Um, Jesus' feet, though, so it was all good. Um, so she anointed with, um, like, to anoint somebody, to wash someone's feet with perfume or oil. Um, it means to sanctify. And what sanctify means is to declare holy. So she's declaring Jesus holy, and this act that she's doing, washing of the feet, it's an act of love and devotion. So that's what this woman's doing. You know, she doesn't care about what anybody else is thinking. She just knows, I need Jesus. I'm going to get on my knees. I'm going to break this um, alabaster jar. I'm going to use this expensive perfume, and I'm going to show God that I declare him holy, that I love him, and I'm devoted to him. The second thing she brought, she brought faith. So she brought faith, and she walked into this room, and she doesn't know what Jesus is going to say. She doesn't know what Jesus is going to think. All she knew is that she was sinful. She was full of sin. She was hurting. She was carrying her sin, and she needed the Son of God in her life. That's what she walked into the room knowing what she needed. She knew, I need Jesus. I'm hurting. I have no way out of this. This is the only way. So those are the things that she brought. And what did she do when she walked into this room? She began washing Jesus' feet. Um, and some of you guys may think that it's really disgusting. I mean, I think it's kind of disgusting too, but it's an act. And what washing of feet um, means, um, it actually explains it beautifully in John um, 13, 14 through 15. It explains why we do it. Um, John 13, 14 through 15 says, And since I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash each other's feet. I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. So this verse, it's when Jesus is with his disciples and Jesus washes all of his disciples' feet. Um, and as it says, it says, I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. And we all know that everything, the whole Bible's about Jesus and he shares his principles with us and he, he shows us what it means to live and how we should act when we live. And this is an example he gives us, to serve one another, not to be served. In washing of the feet, it's a sign of humility. Um, this woman set aside everything. Whatever pride she had left, what, whatever she had left from, you know, she was immoral, she was full of sin, she had a reputation. So whatever she had left, she pushed that aside and she got on her knees and she washed Jesus' feet. She literally washed Jesus' feet with her tears. So imagine how hard she was crying, you know, for her tears and how close she was for her tears to literally fall on Jesus' feet. She had to be really close and she had to be crying really hard. So yeah, so Jesus gives us the example in John 13 of why we wash feet and the significance of why she did what she did. To serve and not to be served. And what else did she do? Like I said before, she cried. She didn't say anything. Um, Luke 7, 38 says, Then she knelt behind him at his feet, weeping. Her tears fell on his feet, and she wiped them off with her hair. Then she kept kissing his feet and putting perfume on them. She didn't walk into the room and declare who she was. We don't even get a name of this woman, right? We just know she's a sinful, immoral woman. That's what the Bible says about her. So she doesn't say who she is. She doesn't say who her family is. She doesn't say what she does. She doesn't say anything. She didn't ask Jesus for anything either. She didn't come in and say, Jesus, this is what I need. This is what I've done. This is what I need you to do in my life. She didn't say anything. She just cried because she knew she just needed Jesus, and she had faith that Jesus knew her heart and knew her hurt. Now, the next verse the verses, this is the longest part that I'm going to read. Um, it talks about Simon. And Simon is the, the Pharisee who invited Jesus to eat with him. And Simon doesn't do a very good thing. So Luke 7, 39 through 46 says, When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he's already questioning who Jesus is, first off. First red flag, <laughs> don't be like Simon. He would know what kind of woman is touching him. She's a sinner. Then Jesus answered his thoughts. Simon, he said to the Pharisee, I have something to say to you. And Simon, go ahead, teacher. Then Jesus told him a story. A man loaned money to two people, 500 pieces of silver to one and 50 pieces to the other. But neither of them could repay him, so he kindly forgave them both. 
canceling their debt, who do you suppose to love to more after that? Simon answered, I suppose the one whom he canceled the larger debt. That's right, Jesus said. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, look at this woman kneeling here. When I entered your home, you didn't offer me water to wash the dust off my feet, but she has washed them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You didn't greet me with a kiss, but from the time I first came in, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You neglected the courtesy of olive oil to anoint my head, but she has anointed my feet with rare perfume. And something that I want you guys to realize too is that in the previous verses, we, we, just, we don't know Simon's name. The Bible refers to him as Pharisee. We only know Simon's name once he begins to think, once he starts to question God, and once he, once he starts to think bad things about this woman, that's when Jesus says Simon, and he calls him out by his name. And this is something that we have to remember. We worry so much about what people are gonna think, what people are gonna do, instead of focusing on Jesus. I'm very guilty of it. Sometimes I walk in here and I think of like, oh, how, what are people gonna think about my outfit? What are they gonna think about my hair? Like I look like a slob. You know, we worry about too much of what, what people think. And a lot of you guys may be thinking like, oh, no, everybody at school knows what, what I, who I am, what I've done. I can't walk into here. Um, we, we, we walk into a place, we walk into places just focusing and thinking like, okay, what are they gonna think? What are they gonna say? Um, instead of focusing on Jesus. And something that I want you guys to remember is that Jesus will take care of them. He's gonna correct them just as he did to Simon. And all you have to do is focus on him. Now Jesus says something to this woman and we could, see, we could read it in verses um, 47 through 50. And what that says is, I tell you her sins, and they are many, have been forgiven. So she has shown me much love, but a person who is forgiven little shows only little love. Then Jesus said to the woman, your sins are forgiven. The men at the table said amongst themselves, who is this woman that he goes around forgiving sins? And Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you, go in peace. Now, some of you guys may be like the men that were around this table asking, who's this guy, Jesus, that's able to forgive my sins, that's able to look past everything that I did and love me? He's Jesus, that's, that's the answer. His name is Jesus. And the reason why he's able to forgive your sins is because God said so. It's as simple as that. Jesus came down to earth and he died on the cross and he paid the price for our sins. The, the price of your sin was not cheap. The price of your sins, that, that's a penalty of death. And Jesus went ahead and did that for us. He died on the cross for us. He paid the price for our sins. And because of his sacrifice, myself and you guys get to walk in freedom. You guys don't have to, you no longer have to be bound by the chains of your sin. You don't have to be bound by the shame of your sin. And no sin that you guys have done, nothing that you've ever done is too big to be forgiven. This, this woman had many sins. She didn't just have one. Jesus literally calls her out and says, you have many sins and I forgive you. And your sins are forgiven and you could walk in freedom. Now, I told you guys a little bit about my story of how I started coming to youth and how when I first started coming, I was very uncomfortable, very shy. Um, so a big part, like the little, the little light that turned on for me, um, Outpour Conference came. A lot of you guys don't know what Outpour Conference is, but it's City Youth Conference. We changed the name a little bit a little while ago. Um, but yeah, so I was able to go to Outpour Conference and I was actually standing like right over here in this general area. And worship was playing, it was like the end of the night, probably like the last day of the conference. And worship was playing, and I wasn't praying, I was just listening to worship, I was just in the presence of God. And all of a sudden, I just feel this heaviness all throughout my body. That was the, the Holy Spirit, that was God. And I, feel, I felt this heaviness, and it literally brought me to my knees and just like this woman, I was sobbing. I was ugly crying. And with every tear that left my body, my body got lighter. I was no longer heavy. 
I was like, wow, this kind of feels nice, like just be able to walk around, bounce around and everything. And like I said, I wasn't praying. I wasn't asking God for anything. I didn't tell God, this is what I've done. This is what I'm thinking. This is who I am. I was just in worship. I was just thinking about God. I was in his presence. And then I got up, you know, worship was done. I got up. And from that day forward, I've been walking in freedom, no longer bound by my sins, shame, sadness, depression. And the only reason is because Jesus, but Jesus interfered with my life. He had a moment with me. The, 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 the creator of all the earth took the time to have a moment with me, to talk to me, to love me. And he said, your sins are forgiven. Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. And I'm, I'm so guilty of this. I do this literally every time I read the Bible. I always think, like, even as I was reading these, um, these verses when I was preparing the message, I always think, like, man, like, what? To feel like this woman, you know, like, what would have that been like? Whenever I read Bible stories, like, man, like, what would it be like to, like, just be in the room with Jesus? Mm -hmm. um, to be in the room with Jesus. I'm very guilty of it. Um, I, I think that all the time, literally, when I'm reading the Bible, I'm like, wow. To be in a time where Jesus was literally walking on the earth. And then I kind of get, like, this conviction where it's like, I remember I was that woman. I was dead in my sin. And I do get to be in the presence of God every day because the God I serve, he's alive and living today, you know? He's moving. Like, I, I get to see him move every day of my life. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call Andy and Yuvia up, or Andy up, the worship team. Um, and I want you guys to do something very different. We're not going to have a traditional altar. I'm going to ask you guys to have a moment with God. Um, they're going to be singing a song called Nothing Else. And in this song, it says, I just want you. And wherever you are, I want you to, just, to go ahead and stand up and get on your knees. I want you to get in the position of washing Jesus' feet. Um, you don't have to. You can spread out if you want to, but you don't have to come up here if you don't want to. Um, and if you can't get on your knees, I just want you to sit in your, on, your, on your seat but for us to just to be in the position of washing Jesus' feet. Um, and I know a lot of you guys may be thinking, like, who's this Jesus? A lot of you guys may, it may be your first time, and you may be thinking, who's this guy who can forgive all that I've done? His name is Jesus, and he loves you. And... I'm not gonna ask you to raise your hand. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask everybody just to bow their heads and close their eyes. And if you wanna accept Jesus into your life today, if you're tired of carrying your sins, I want you just to pray this prayer with me. Father God, Lord, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I can't do this life alone and I no longer want to do this life alone. I recognize that you are my savior, that you died on the cross for me, and you, you paid for all of my sins so that I may have eternal life. Father God, Lord, I devote my life to you, and I ask that you use me in all areas of my life, Father God, Lord. Allow me to love you and worship you for all the days of my life. It's in your name we pray, amen. If you pray that prayer today.